um, there are a few droplets in this data set and probably the best way to, uh, to segment those manually using the brush tool. In order to select brush I should go to the selection type and then choose brush. Then I'll press this fit to screen button in the toolbar in order to zoom in into the image. And then I'll go just to the beginning of the data set and using the mouse wheel I will just scroll through the data trying to search for my for the lipid droplets. Uh, now I can see that here there is lipid droplet appearing. And what I can do I just zoom into this area by pressing uh, w key and then I'm just starting to draw kind of a rough shape around this lipid droplet. I don't need to draw this on each slice I can draw it uh, with some gaps in between which I will fill later with interpolation. If there is some kind of uh, some holes appearing after the drawing I can fill these holes using this fill button or the F shortcut. So the brush tool works in the way that if you press a left mouse button then it starts drawing so you start to generate this uh, selection layer which is like this green but if you draw something uh, kind of in the wrong areas you can always fix that and in order to change the brush into the eraser tool you need to press control key hold the control key and then use the left mouse button This way you can draw quite uh, exact areas. So basically what I do, I just uh, draw outlines, rough outlines around the slippy droplet using the brush. Okay, it's up to here. Then I press, I, I go to menu, selection, interpolate, or I can use I shortcut. What happens that we interpolate the uh, between the empty slices that we have. Now we have these lipid droplets kind of roughly segmented. Uh, of course I can say that this is my lipid droplet but uh, as you can see it's not that well segmented there are these kind of empty areas which do not belong to this lipid droplet. So instead of saying that this is my material I would actually assign this to the mask. So the mask layer is the uh, it's one additional layer that can be used by to limit uh, selection only to this masked area. So what I do, I select this add to as mask and then press shift A button to add the my selection layer which was in green to this mask layer. So now you can see that selection, the green color has gone and instead I have this uh, magenta outline which specifies a uh, mask layer. Now I go to the next lipid droplet which is here and again I'll do this kind of rough mask around it just to really have the lipid droplet within this masked area and then I press I to interpolate. Now I have another area selected and then I can again press shift A to add the selected area to the mask. Okay, there is another one here. So we can just do the similar selection. Okay. Press I to interpolate. So now we have basically three lipid droplets, maybe there are some of them would have some uh, areas missing, so we can again just do another selection and press A to add it. When I press A, the only thing which is happens that I add the selection which I see uh, on this of the for the current slice. If I use shift A, it will add selection for all slices of the data set. For example, uh, let's see, we have another lipid droplet here. So again, I, I will start selection of this lipid droplet. Okay, from one. And press I to interpolate. So uh, now if I press A, what will actually happen that it will add this green area to the mask, but only for this slice 
all other slices will be unaffected. In order to do it for all slices, I should press, I should press Shift A, and in this case, in this case, all selection on from all slices will be assigned to the mask material. So uh, we continue further with the with the other lipid droplets. For example, with this one here, uh, it's important that interpolation can only work for one object. So uh, I can only have one. I can work with uh, one object at a time. If I would have several, then uh, the interpolation most likely fail. Okay. Now I have this lipid droplet segmented this way. I can basically go visualize these areas, but they're going to be quite rough again because there are quite a lot of not exact areas. I can of course try to polish it manually, but uh, it will actually take quite a lot of time. So instead of doing that, what I would actually like to do a local black and white thresholding within these areas that I have uh, masked. Uh, to do that, I go to the selection type, select black and white thresholding tool, and then within this tool I can move the sliders upper and lower one to select the high and lower threshold point. So because now I'm interested in the dark areas, I would like to remove the white light areas which are background. I will keep the lower uh, threshold limit at zero and just move the upper slider. I can move the slider, I can press these buttons and then I can also specify the step for the slider by pressing the right mouse button above this uh, slider and set this uh, the step, for example, to 1. In this case, each, each click on this button will change the, uh, the value for the slider by 1. Uh, the, the thing which is now, uh, take place now, is that uh, I threshold the, the whole image. And uh, uh, I would actually want to threshold only the areas which are within the, my mask. So to do that, I click this checkbox, which is at the bottom of this panel, it calls masked area. And in this case, whatever I do for the thresholding, it would actually would uh, take place only within this masked areas. So uh, what I need to do, I just need to figure out the proper parameters for the thresholding, and then. Uh, I will apply this for the whole image by keeping by pressing this all checkbox. Now if I will just go then you can see that the all masked areas that I have in the data sets got segmented. Um, now what I can do, I'm basically interested in the shapes of these lipid droplets. I'm not interested that whether they have something inside or not. So I'd like to fill these internal parts. To do that I press Shift F. Then, of course, there are a few areas here that were not filled because they were not really closed, and then I have to fill those manually or keep them as it is, like this. Now, uh, I would like to assign these areas to my material of my model. In order to do that, I need uh, to change the selection of this in this list, which is called Add to, from Mask to Material 1 which is on the same line as this, uh, the name of this material, lipid droplet. Now I will uncheck this masked area and uh, I will press Shift A to add everything which is now green into my material 1. Now you can see that I have segmented basically these uh, lipid droplets. And those uh, lipid droplets that have this kind of opening, they have uh, they have, we can, we will be able, actually will be able to see inside of those. Now let's save the model. In order to save the model, go to model and then save model as. And uh, again, I will go to the same directory where I saved the data. And uh, by default, the uh, in browser adds the labels tag in the beginning of the models. So I just save it in this MATLAB format. For the visualization purposes, I can use, for example, Amira. And what I can do, I can, again, go to this model, save model as, but uh, this time I save the model as the Amira mesh binary. 
Then I can open Amira. Let's make it a little bit smaller. I can go open the data. And it was here. I will open my original data and the labels to that. Uh, we'll connect this here and then make surface gen. Okay. And then this is the lipid droplets that we were just segmented. Maybe I can use the uh, constraint smoothing for those. And, uh, So that's basically our model of our lipid droplets. It's not that smooth yet. And these are the openings that we were not feeling.